Welcome to the video series on Research Methods and Analysis by Data and Research. In this video, we will discuss about the confidence interval, probability and hypothesis. Katie and Nettie were friends. After a long break, they met each other today. In between their conversation, Katie said, Friends are better than my family in understanding me. Hearing this, Nettie asked, Are you sure? Are you confident to say like that? If I have to be confident, I have to be 100% sure about it, Kitty thought. While Kitty was thinking like this, Nettie continued, In my case, there is no difference between friends and family in understanding me. Probably. Hearing this, Kitty responded. Nettie was surprised to hear that. She said, That means you are not 100% confident to accept it. That's it. If you are not 100% confident, then you are talking about probability. Am I 100% confident to say that I trust my friends? 100% means 100 upon 100. That means 1. 1 indicates surety or full confidence. If I have 100 friends, I am confident from my first friend to my last friend. In other words, my confidence interval on trust based on the number of my friends is 100%. But what if I started doubting about the commitment of one of my friends? My confidence in saying that I trust my friends reduced. I am not sure with the statement anymore. Here emerges the concept of probability. Probably I trust my friends. My confidence interval reduced for one point. It became 99%. As I am not sure about the statement, I am stating a hypothesis. I trust my friend because I started doubting one out of my hundred friends. In other words, I am one percent unconfident about my hypothesis. That means I do not trust one percent of my friends. This resulted in the emergence of another hypothesis which states about the absence of trust. As it is talking about the absence of trust, I am going to call it as null hypothesis. But 1% unconfidence is not an issue. I trust the majority of them. Hence I am standing with my statement, I trust my friends. Now, what if I started doubting too? The confidence interval reduces to 98%. Probability of accepting I do not trust my friends increased to 2%. But I trust 98% of my friends. I am standing with my statement, I trust my friends. If I start doubting about 3 out of my 100 friends, the confidence interval further reduces to 97%. Probability of accepting I do not trust my friends is 3%. However, I trust 97% of my friends. Hence, I am standing with my statement, I trust my friends. Doubts about four of my friends? The confidence interval went down further to 96%. 
probability of accepting the null hypothesis increased to 4%. Still, I trust 96% of my friends. So, I am with the statement, I trust my friends. Now, 5 of my friends are in the blacklist. Confidence interval became 95%. I am in a dilemma now. Should I accept the null hypothesis? Because I am not trusting 5% of them. Okay, on the other side it is 95%. I will continue with my statement, I trust my friends. Now, this is very bad. I am not sure about 6 of my friends. Confidence interval went below 95%. I cannot hold my statement, I trust my friends anymore. I am accepting the null hypothesis. I do not trust my friends. Somewhat this is happening in the rejecting and accepting of null hypothesis in humanities and social science research. If you have 99% confidence in your alternate hypothesis, Probability of accepting the null hypothesis is 0 0.01. In humanities and social science research, 0 0.05 is considered as cutoff to accept or reject null hypothesis. If 98% of your sample provides you confidence to stick on to your alternate hypothesis, then the probability of accepting the null hypothesis is 0 0.02 which is still lesser than 0 0.05. If 97% of your sample provides you confidence to stick on to your alternate hypothesis, then the probability of accepting the null hypothesis is 0 0.03, which again is lesser than 0 0.05. If 96% of your sample provides you confidence to stick on to your alternate hypothesis, then the probability of accepting the null hypothesis is 0 0.04, which again is lesser than 0 0.05. If 95% of your sample provides you confidence to stick on to your alternate hypothesis, then the probability of accepting the null hypothesis is 0 0.05. This is a little bit critical because you are equal to the cutoff. Still, based on the discretion of the researcher, we can decide about the acceptance or rejection of null hypothesis. But if the confidence interval is less than 95%, probability of accepting the null hypothesis increased. It went above 0 0.05, the cutoff. We have to accept the null hypothesis here. These are our magic spells. Accept null hypothesis if p is greater than 0 0.05 and reject null hypothesis if p is lesser than 0 0.05. Please be cautious. Some popular softwares are presenting p as SIG with a period. This SIG stands for significance. This indicates nothing but probability or p. Hope you enjoyed learning about confidence interval, probability and hypothesis. If you have any questions, suggestions or recommendations, please write to dandr365 at gmail.com.